Hello there, and welcome. How's it going? This is Mark Castillo, aka the Digital Marketing Warrior. Welcome to the Ask and Be Inspired Affiliate Marketing live stream, designed to help you get unstuck, produce results, and achieve time freedom, even if you're brand new. Have you dreaded criticism from your coaches, your mentors, or your upline? And when they give you some constructive feedback, you have a hard time taking it in because you just feel like maybe you're just not cut out for this. Maybe it's just you just need the right opportunity in order to start profiting from. And it's not so much that it has something to do with you, but you tend to blame them or you blame the company. Now, I wasn't one to handle criticism very well growing up. In fact, a lot of times when I was growing up, when I would get some criticism from my dad, I would always interpret it as getting scolded. I always felt like every time that my dad critiqued me on something, I just went back to the feelings of not feeling good enough internally. Whenever he would tell me, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, oh, that's not good enough, you got to do it like this. And every time that I was getting critiqued throughout the years growing up, I felt like I was doing nothing right. I felt like I wasn't good enough internally. And that led me to becoming insecure with myself when I would receive criticism from other people. So you can imagine when I got started in this affiliate marketing business and when I received criticism from my coaches and mentors, I didn't really take it as well as I should. I felt like I was being attacked on my self-worth. I felt like, oh, because I'm getting critiqued, I feel like I'm not good enough. And there was even a breaking point, and this was one of the reasons I went on another hiatus back in 2021 going into 2022. When I was told by one of my coaches and mentors that there's one element that I've been missing from my marketing efforts, subconsciously, it activated that I'm not good enough belief in me. And so I shut down. I went away for a whole year and I didn't do anything with marketing the business. And it was tough for me because I felt like I was doing all the right things and then I'm missing one thing. And it got me so frustrated to the point that, oh, I got to figure out like what it is. What is it? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I just felt like, you know what? I need a break. Uh, I've been doing all this work and I'm working a job right now. It's too much for me. So I went and took a hiatus for a whole year. Then when I came back, I realized something. When I took a look at what I've done with my business up to that point, I realized I wasn't doing all that I can. In fact, the things that were going to help me in my business, I was running away from them. I felt like I was being attacked. I felt like my self-work, my self-worth was under fire. I didn't really feel like I could really be the marketer. I didn't really feel like I could be the leader and authority because here I am just putting out content out there, hoping that it will attract somebody. And here I am just feeling like I'm not worthy. And that was a problem because something that I learned from my coaches and mentors that resurfaced back when I jump started back my business in 2023. Don't run away from criticism. 
In fact, that constructive criticism can help you get unstuck and overcome the challenge or challenges you're facing right now. You got to be willing to look at your business from an open, honest perspective. If you got things that you're working on that are not working for you, you have to take a look at that. You can't be operating your business out of blind optimism or from guess and check. Because let's face it, nobody can run a sustainable, profitable business that way. What you got to do is if you want to get to the next level, if you want to get over whatever challenges or hurdles that you're facing in your business right now, you got to be willing to take com some constructive criticism. You got to be willing to take constructive feedback. Now, if you have a problem with being told that what you're doing right now is not good, it's not so much you that's rejecting the constructive criticism. It's your ego. Your ego's not taking it well, and it wants to take control. It wants to feel like it's right. But is that going to help your business? Ask yourself that question. And when you realize that that kind of thinking is not going to help you, well, you got to understand that having an ego is not going to help you build your business. If you've got coaches and mentors who have already walked the journey and who are already successful, listen to what they have to tell you. Listen to their wisdom because their wisdom can help you get the results that you're looking for. If you keep rejecting their wisdom, then you're going to be staying stuck in a rut and you're not going to be seeing anything work no matter how positive you are on any given day. Don't run away from criticism. Don't run away from constructive feedback. Now. If you've got a problem with receiving such criticism, think back to where that originated from. What is it about criticism in general that's causing you to get emotionally affected? Therefore, when somebody's giving you constructive feedback, you don't take it well. There's something there from some point in your past that's causing you to feel that way. And it's up to you to figure out where that originated from. And when you figure out where that originated from, then make the decision to let that go, to keep an open mind, to be open to receiving feedback so you can make the changes that are going to help you build a successful business. You can't build a successful business with a closed mind. You can't build a successful business with a know-it-all mentality. That's the kind of thinking that's going to keep you broke and struggling. Remember that. you got to overcome that hurdle. It's okay to take constructive criticism, constructive feedback. We all go through learning curves on our journey. It's okay to go through learning curves and business. Nobody starts out perfect and doesn't make mistakes. Heck, even my coaches and mentors, Ace and Rich Guzman, they've made a lot of mistakes in their marketing journey. It took them 10 years before they finally figured out how marketing really works because when they got started back in 2008 right around that time they were just confused on how to make their business work for them and they went through a lot of learning curves they sought coaching and mentorship from some of the best of the best in the industry and when they finally realized what they were doing wrong they went out of their own way and they just implemented the changes which led to their success today and for me 
when I got over my mindset obstacles, my challenges, and my need to cling on to my insecurities, I started seeing results. I started generating my first thousand dollars online. And right now for social media, it's working for me in that I've been generating a $20 residual income from it. Now it's not much, mind you, but it's a start because I'm getting out of my own way, getting uncomfortable and taking action. That's why the momentum's starting to pick up and I'm starting to see the results climb little by little. And I am on my way to getting closer to my $6,000 per month goal. Now, what's your goal that you want to achieve in your business right now? It could be your first $1,000 per month. It could be your first $5,000 per month. Whatever that number is, set a number and take the necessary action steps in order to attain that. And in order to attain that income goal, you got to keep an open mind. You can't run away from criticism that you receive, especially when it comes from your coaches and mentors. They know what they're doing. And all you need to do is just implement and follow their advice. But you want to also make sure that you get the right coaching and mentorship from the right people. Because there's a lot of people out there who will tell you what you want to hear, who will tell you to do one thing, and then they're doing something completely different. And you want to be careful about those kinds of people. Not everyone that calls themselves a marketing coach or mentor has your best interest. But not everyone's going to be like that. There are some really good coaches and mentors who are willing to help you out, who care about your success, who are going to tell it to you like it is so that you can make the changes and start becoming closer to where you want to be so that you can become successful in building this business. Don't run away from criticism. Keep an open mind. When you open your mind, to receiving what it needs and you all go and implement those changes, you're going to be building a business that's successful and you're going to start seeing those results come in. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next segment in which I'm going to be taking questions. I got some questions that came flying in prior to this live stream and I'll go ahead and start answering them right now. Kumar asks, how do I get my first thousand subscribers on YouTube? Well, that depends on certain factors, Kumar. What you want to look at is how often are you posting video content? Now, if you're only posting video content once a week and you're just getting started with a brand new YouTube video channel, it's not good enough. You got to be posting on your video channel every single day. In fact, I recommend that you post a video twice a day to get that momentum going. And so you can trigger the YouTube algorithm for your videos to show up on. But not only that, you got to make sure that most importantly, your videos are targeted. If they're not targeted to a specific niche, it's going to be hard to reach that number of subscribers that you're looking for, which is a thousand. How you get your subscribers is by targeting a specific niche you want to focus on. Are you targeting those that are into make money online? Are you targeting those that are into cooking? Those that are into video games, etc., etc. If your videos are not targeted, you got to get crystal clear and specific about what niche you want to target. And then you want to create content around that niche through your videos so that you can start attracting your audience that way. And you also got to keep in mind that there are also other factors too, particularly the way you do your keyword research. Now, you can have 
all this video content put out there. You can be doing videos twice a day and you can be creating videos that are target specific to your audience. But if they're not properly keyword researched, if they don't have the proper keywords on those videos, they're not going to be found. It's going to be like finding a billboard in a desert or those random ads that you sometimes see when you're driving by certain stores and you see like the most random ads just posted on the corner. But how many people are going to see it? And so you got to factor in, you got to get niche specific, target the audience that you want to target. You got to be consistent and you got to look at your keyword research because if you're missing any of these three things, that's why you're not getting a thousand subscribe YouTube subscribers. Now, mind you, no one knows how long it will take to get to a thousand subscribers. It all depends on your work ethic, what you're willing to do to put content out there. And you got to have patience too. To build a YouTube channel for the long term, it takes time, but it's not impossible. Alan asks, how do I increase my YouTube income? Does it require the right marketing strategy? Alan, it does require the right marketing strategy, but like I said a moment ago, what you want to focus on is make sure that whatever videos that you're putting out there, make sure they're target specific. If you're posting a bunch of videos, but they're not relevant to your target audience, which you want to target, then it's going to be a waste of time. And you want to make sure that you get content specific on your target audience and create content around that target niche in which it's the kind of content that they like. It's the kind of content that they want. It's the kind of content that they're searching for. And how do you increase your YouTube income? Well, there's a lot of people that do Patreon and all these other different things like uh, doing a partnership through uh, YouTube. But here, here's the thing. like For my YouTube channel, I don't do any of that. I don't have a Patreon account. I don't do a partnership through YouTube in which I monetize my own YouTube videos. Now, for some people, they do that stuff. But really, if you get target specific on your niche, you do your keyword research, Wyatt, and you stay consistent in posting video content on a daily basis, and you do that over a long period of time, you're going to be able to not only build up your subscriber base, but if you're selling a product or service, then what you can do for each video that you create is you can put a link to those products or services that you have to offer. You can easily do that without having to go through uh, Patreon, creating a Patreon account or getting uh, monetized by YouTube themselves. So you can absolutely do that. You don't need to have to go through all these hoops and loops. All you really need to do is just consistently post video content on a daily basis. Make sure they speak to the target audience which you want to target and you're going to make sure that you master doing your keyword research because without the proper keyword research on your videos they're likely not going to be found and i can tell you that from my own experience doing youtube videos get good with your keyword research get good with consistently posting videos on your YouTube channel and make sure they're target specific to your audience. BJ asks, what are YouTube video thumbnails and are they essential to have? Well, YouTube thumbnails are designed to capture 
your viewer's attention when they go ahead and type something in the search results and it populates these different videos. They're just visuals for your video content. Nothing more than that. And what these YouTube thumbnails are designed to do is they're designed to grab your attention. Now, I have made YouTube videos with YouTube thumbnails from before, and I've even made YouTube videos without thumbnails. And what I can tell you from testing is you don't really need them. But if you want to have the YouTube thumbnails for your videos for whatever reason, you're more than welcome to create them. But if you're marketing on your YouTube video channel, you don't necessarily need the YouTube thumbnails. Because what I see from my own testing with my own videos, I put up a video and it gets views. Now, I have a strategy that I follow every time that I post a video, but what I can tell you from experience is don't be spending a whole lot of time creating your YouTube thumbnails. Spend a lot of time creating the video content itself. You can have the best looking YouTube video thumbnail in the whole wide world, but if your video content itself is crap, then what's the point? So you wanna make sure that when it comes to YouTube, Make sure that you focus on creating your valuable video content. Focus on the content itself. And then what you want to do is you just want to focus on that. Do your keyword research properly. And then all you have to do is just simply select the video thumbnail, like the, a shot from the video that you want to include in your thumbnail and you can do your youtube channel uh, post your videos that way you don't need to go out and create a thumbnail although the video thumbnails are optional diane asks what are the most effective ways to qualify leads before investing time in them that's a great question, Diane. And what I can tell you is in order to qualify the leads that you generate, first, you got to make sure that you have a good sales funnel set up. Now, obviously, you have three different elements to a sales funnel. You have the capture page, you have the bridge page, and you have the sales page. So a capture page, obviously it's designed to just capture your leads information. And it could be something as simple as their email. Now, after they opt in with their email, they have to go through the, your sales funnel in order to qualify. Now, if they don't qualify for your sales funnel, what they'll do is they'll just simply hop off after they put their email or they don't put their email at all. But if they do qualify, what they're going to do after they opt in with their email is they're going to watch the video that's on the next page via the bridge page. Then they're going to click on the button and then they're going to be redirected to your sales page, which they can either click the button and buy from you or they just simply hop off the page. Now, let's say you have a sales funnel in place. Let's say they opt in with their email, but they don't bother going through the, the rest of the sales funnel. What, that, what, you, what other way you can go about doing this is when you capture your leads email, you wanna make sure you have an autoresponder in place and you wanna have a welcome email series in place. What this welcome series email will do is it will help to qualify those leads so that they can get segmented onto two different kinds of lists, who's serious and who's still on the fence. And with these welcome series of emails, if they open them, that means they'll qualify to get put 
on a different segment of your list. But if they don't qualify, then they won't open the email. And then when it's time to clean up your list and your autoresponder, they're just simply going to get deleted. So the two ways you can qualify your leads is by setting up your sales funnel for your leads to go through your traffic that you're driving to it. And you got to make sure that you have a welcome series of emails in your autoresponder for them to go through so that they can get segmented and qualified. Reese asks, what is the most effective sales automation tool for sending out bulk emails from a Gmail account? Biggest mistake you can make in email marketing. I'm going to say this for you, Reese, but I'm also going to say this for whoever's watching this right now. The biggest mistake you can make with email marketing is sending emails to your leads from a free email provider. Do not do this. This is the biggest mistake you can make in email marketing. If you're sending out bulk emails to a huge number of people and you're sending it from a free uh, Gmail provider, you're going to get in a lot of trouble and that's going to lead you to be marked as spam and you're going to get your account blocked. There's a number of things that can happen, but just to put it bluntly, don't do it. In fact, I recommend that you do two things. Number one, you want to get a custom domain name and then you want to get a reliable autoresponder. I highly recommend Aweber. And if you're curious to know how you can get those set up, I encourage you to inquire with me through Messenger on how you can get your custom domain name set up for your business, as well as your autoresponder if you don't already have one. But you want to make sure that never ever send an email and send out emails from a generic email provider type of email. Never do this. You're going to get in a lot of trouble. It's going to cause you a lot of headache. Avoid doing this at all cost. Get a custom domain name for your business and get an autoresponder. Those two things, if you set them up, they're going to save you a lot of time and make it easier for you to do email marketing. Okay, so if you so if there's anybody on here that has any more questions, if you have any more questions that you'd like me to answer, I'll be around for just a moment. And if there are no more questions, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Okay, I don't see any more questions coming in. I trust you got a ton of value out of this live stream. And if you did, I invite you to join me on the journey to achieving time freedom, especially if you're brand new to the affiliate marketing industry. Simply grab my free beginner's cheat sheet for affiliate marketing report by looking for the link below this video and let me know how I can be of service to you on your journey to business success. I'll gladly point you in the right direction. With that said, this is Mark Castillo, aka the Digital Marketing Warrior. Thank you so much for joining me on this live stream. Have an amazing day, wherever you may be, whatever time zone that you're watching this from. And I'll see you on the next one very soon. Take care and all the absolute best.